Hello everyone, this is the NLE Ninja, and I'm here to provide a quick tutorial for Ninja Edits X Volume 1. I'll show you how simple it is to change the placeholder images that I have set and use your own footage through some of the effects. Let's start with the 4 panel vertical effect. I have some footage in my project browser that I'm going to use, but you can follow along with your own footage. With the 4 panel vertical effect, the placeholder is on track 1 with the track mat key already applied. For the first vertical mat, I have a spare placeholder in case you want to extend the length of your footage. I'll explain the significance of the second placeholder when I show you how to use it with a freeze frame. If you want to replace the placeholder image with your own footage, here's what you have to do. Load the footage into the source monitor. Find the point where you want this to start and set an endpoint. Click on the video only icon while holding Option and drag your clip to the placeholder image. Now, your clip will inherit all the attributes that the placeholder image had and the panel effect will now be shown on your footage, like so. With the same clip you used, or another clip, make sure you have the endpoint set first. Option drag your clip to the placeholder image to replace it once again. Right click on the clip and select frame hold. Select hold on endpoint and hit OK. Option drag your clip again to the second placeholder. Now, you'll have the four panels on the freeze frame only, and then you have the footage playing afterwards. If you want, you can extend the length of your footage after the freeze frame just so you have longer playback. These steps I took for this effect apply to the other effects such as the four panel horizontal effect, the blinking square effect, and the flat mat effect. Let's try another one of our effects, the stutter cuts. With the stutter cuts effect, I was trying to achieve the repeated jump cut effect you see often in music videos and montages. There are third party plugins that can do this as well, but I figured out a way to do it when you just have Premiere and nothing more. There are variations of this effect if you want more stutters down in the timeline. I have a clip of some dancer footage here and I'm going to use option drag to change the placeholder to my footage. Our first placeholder is about 7 frames long so what I want to do is set an in and out point to match that length. Next, let's option drag that section to change the first placeholder. Our next placeholders are about 4 frames long, so what I want to do is change my current in point to a moment where I want it to repeat, but keep my out point the same. I'm going to find that moment in my clip now. Once you found that moment, let's highlight the repeated placeholders. Let's often drag our clip to those highlighted placeholders and let go. Now, all our stutter placeholders have the same clip for the same length. In the source monitor, go to the out point of your clip. 
clear the out point by hitting Option O or right clicking to clear the out point. Set a new in point at the playhead's current position. Often drag the video only icon onto the last placeholder. We'll set an in and out point around our animation. And let's play it back. If you decide to render this or just play it back like I just did, you should have a clip that stutters playback about three to six times and then continues to play normally. If you want the stutters to last longer from the other stutters I have in the timeline, you can extend their length, but also know that you'll have to change the end point of your last clip after you extend them. Let's try another effect, the four box step in effect. For this effect, all you'll need is one clip. To make this work, we're going to use markers as points to make this process a whole lot easier. Let's load a clip into our source monitor. In the source monitor, let's set an endpoint where we want this to start. After you do that, add a marker. Let's move about 8 frames in our timeline and set an out point and another marker. Let's highlight the first placeholders in tracks 1 through 4. Option drag your clip over the highlighted placeholders to replace them. Go back to your source monitor and move to the next marker, which is the last marker where our current playhead is at. Change the endpoint to the playhead's current position. Highlight the second placeholders in tracks 1 through 4. Let's option drag the video only icon onto those placeholders. Let's deselect all our clips. Let's right click and select frame hold. Make sure it's hold on endpoint and hit OK. Let's repeat this process for the clips on tracks 2 through 4. Last but not least, let's go back to our source monitor. With our current endpoint where it's at, we can move the playhead a bit forward and set a new out point. And let's option drag the video only icon on top of our last placeholder. Let's set an endpoint at the one frame mark at our timeline. And let's set an out point at the end of our animation. And now, let's play it back. If you decide to play it back or render it all the way through, you'll see that your clip appears four times, freezes, and plays forward. Let's move on to our next effect, the curved screen and rolling panels effect. This effect is relatively simple to change up. If we go to the curve screen solo sequence, all we have to do is option or alt drag our own footage where the placeholder is, and just like the other effects, it will inherit the attributes of the placeholder. Let me demonstrate. If you want to change the rolling panels, open the Panels No Movement sequence. The placeholders occupy tracks 1 through 4, and the roll frame is on track 5. You can replace the placeholders with different clips as opposed to the same one by option dragging the video only icon, and the clips will inherit their attributes, like so. Since I include the PSD file, you have the option of changing the color or the layer styles in Photoshop to taste. After you've loaded your own footage into the Panels No Movement sequence, 
Your footage will be in sync with the animation if you go to the curve screen and panel sequence, like so. If you want to change the speed of the rolling panels, let's go to the curve screen and panels nest sequence. Let's, go to the, let's select one of our panel strips and go to the effect control tab. Next thing you have to do is find the last keyframe on the offset filter in the flex control panel. Right now it's set to 8 seconds 9 frames. So what we could do is we could twirl down video 2, we could right click we could click on where it says opacity, go to offset and show shift to center keyframes. Since I trimmed half the point of this sequence, we could extend it till we see the full length of it. And there's our keyframe right there. So we can ma have the option of making it faster or making it shorter. Or make it even slower than it is right now. If you want to change the color of the curved screen, let's go to the curved screen solo sequence. All you have to do is apply a color balance HLS filter and change the hue and saturation to taste. And let's go to the effects browser. Let's select color balance HLS and apply it to our curved screen. If you scroll down the parameters for the hue, lightness, and saturation, so I just had a keyframe there. You could twirl the hue wheel and it'll go through the color spectrum like it is right now. And you could bump up the lightness or decrease it, and you can also bump up the saturation to taste. Let's go back to the curved screen scrolling panel sequence, and now you'll see that all of our clips are in sync with the animation. On track one, I have a title placeholder for inserting your own motion graphics background, so if you go back to your project browser, and you import your own motion graphics background, all you have to do is select it, hold down Option, and drag it to the placeholder. Now the motion graphics background will inherit all the attributes of the title placeholder, and since it's four seconds long, you shouldn't have a problem replacing it. If you run into a situation where you have a background that's less than four seconds, then make sure you uh, import one that's longer so it can accommodate the title placeholder. Let's move on to our last effect, the 3D panel switch transition. This effect was inspired by a great editor friend of mine, Sean Montanamo, and he used this in a news story about a few years back. With this effect, the only sequences you have to worry about are the ones labeled frame and footage A and B. These have the placeholder images, and once you option drag your clips over the placeholders, they don't have the attributes. Let me demonstrate. If you want to change the speed of this transition, go to the main 3D panel transition sequence. Change the keyframes for the frame footage sequence in the 3D panel alpha to taste. So if I click on frame 1 and go to the effects control panel, I have keyframes for position, scale, as well as opacity, basic 3D's parameters, and we all have to do is change the last keyframe on each of those parameters. If you scroll forward here, you'll also see that I have another placeholder for a motion graphics background to be used. And just like the curved screen and panels effect, I also have a title placeholder for inserting a motion graphics background of your choice. You can change the background by importing it into the project browser, holding down Option, and dragging it on top of our placeholder on track 1.
Now, my playback on my machine isn't as strong as probably some of your machines may be, but if you choose to play it back at half resolution or full resolution, or if you choose to render it, then you'll see it at its full potential, as you saw in the promo video. Well, I hope this quick tutorial helps in your use of this project. I plan to release another project if, and only if, I get somewhere between 500 to 1,000 new subscribers, so subscribe if you want another one, and tell your friends as well. Also, I would like to provide a few shoutouts to Premiere Pro tutorial makers you should check out on the web besides myself. First on the list is Best Pro Action. He makes some excellent Premiere Pro tutorials, as well as After Effects tutorials. You could subscribe to his channel here on YouTube, you can follow him on Twitter, like him on Facebook, and also go to his website, bestproaction.com. Next on the list is Vidmuse. Vidmuse came around a few months back and he makes tutorials for Cinema 4D, After Effects, Premiere Pro, as well as Encore and a few other programs. You can check him out on vidmuse.com, you can follow him on Twitter, you can also like him on Facebook, and you can also look for him on Vimeo. Next on the list is Clay Ashbury. Clay has been editing for almost 25 years and he has experience using multiple NLEs such as Final Cut Pro, Avid, and Premiere Pro. Recently, he started making Premiere Pro tips for people who are switching from a Final Cut Pro workflow to a Premiere Pro workflow. So if you want to know more about him and his tips, you can always visit his website at www.claygashbury.com. Last but not least is Josh Weiss of Retool.net. Josh has been making Switch tutorials for people who are switching from a Final Cut Pro 7 workflow to a Premiere Pro workflow. He has his videos online on Vimeo, and he also has them on his website. So if you need to know more about efficiency things on Premiere Pro, check out Retool.net. These guys make some great Premiere Pro tips and tricks and can help take your skills to the next level. You can also check out FilmImpact.net and get your hands on some free Final Cut Pro 7 and Premiere Pro transitions. I'll be doing a tutorial for them on their transitions soon, so be on the lookout, but these are excellent transitions to have in your system. In Premiere Pro, they actually function as real transitions. So if we go to Video Transitions, you can see that Film Impact, I have options called Impact Blur to Color, Impact Flash, Impact Push, Impact Roll, and Impact Stretch. So I have the option of getting flash frames, rolls, stretches, transitions I was used to in Final Cut Pro here in Premiere, and I don't have to actually use them as filters. They're just straight-up transitions I drop on the heads and tails of two clips. One last piece of news, I'm heading to Las Vegas in the next week to NAB show. There I'll see upcoming cameras, rigs, hardware, software, and more. I will also bump into some famous editors, MoGraph slash VFX artists, and more that you may or may not know, but I'll provide pics and tweets galore. You can follow me on Twitter and keep up by following me at NLE underscore Ninja. After NAB show, more tutorials will come out on a more regular basis so there isn't long stints in between them. But until then, stay creative.